This is what our own policy says what an EA is supposed to be. Briefly su provide sufficient evidence and analysis for determining whether to prepare an environmental impact statement or finding of no significant impact. CEQ says they should probably be no more than 15 pages. Okay. So I think probably a lot of you saw this paper up here and thought this is the amount of paper that we've generated as an agency in doing ours, but it's not. I'm showing this to you for another reason. So Tony, uh, the chief talked earlier about that we have 80 million acres that are at mo moderate to high risk of wildfire that are in need of restoration. There are 80 reams of paper up here. Each one of these represents a million acres. This is our challenge on restoration here. Okay, it's a big challenge. We know that 25 million of that is our most critical. This is, these are the areas that we have to get in. Communities are at risk, watersheds are at risk. These are the most critical areas where we know that we have a, could have a severe catastrophic fire and that we need to get in there and do either some prescribed burning to reduce fuel loads or mechanical treatments to thin those forests. This is our challenge. 25 million critical acres of this total 80 million acres that we are, uh, we are severely behind on on trying to create this. This is what's creating so much tension for us with our communities and our partners. This is our challenge. So let's talk about how we're dealing with this challenge. So in this challenge, every single piece of paper represents about 2,000 acres, okay? So we're going to address that. And so for those of you that are not part of NFS, that are part of research, that are part of state and private, that are part of um, uh, um, biz ops, I'm sorry, I was going there. Um, I want, I want I, this is the piece that I want you to feel and see because this is part of our dilemma. So we're gonna address this problem. So what do we do? We initiate a team and we create a project we do an analysis, we work with the public, and we do this. So this is a decision, and, and, and I, I can pull this from almost every region out there. This is a decision from a region that was signed about two and a half months ago. This is the EA, 587 pages. Sorry, it took about five years. This is like blood, sweat, and tears. I've been on these teams. I know what it takes to put these things out. Five years, three ID team leaders, two forest supervisors. When we really look at the costs, well over a million dollars in this. That's, that was a huge effort from a forest to do this work. And so what did it do? What did it help us with on this issue? It essentially, it essentially authorized this. That's what it did. And that's not unique. And we're gonna talk about that, and we're gonna show some of that. And I wanna show you some other things. So the four fry decision, we're here around four fry. This was one of our pilots to try something different. We scaled things up. We got a big collaborative together. Okay, the four fry decision, that essentially, a little bigger EIS than that, I believe, right? Jim, a little bigger than that. But what did it authorize and what did it cost us? It cost us a little over $3 million, wide collaboration, and it authorized So one decision, and it, oper it, it authorized almost a half million acres of treatment, and total a million acres when you look at all the other pieces with it, in one decision. Widely supported, wasn't litigated, because we did the right work up front in collaboration, and we, we had the idea of thinking boldly. 
let's talk, and that was an EIS, it wasn't an EA. Let's talk about what other agencies do. So I, I talked about treating 1,000 acres. Let's talk about that same region, and they're looking at using insect and disease heifer CEs. So this is one of those innovations. This is that great story. You know, I've heard folks talk about the new CEs in insect and disease of whether they think they could actually do that or not. But same region does an insect and disease EA. Won't show it. This, this one essentially was done in six months with collaboration versus that EA that took five years. It authorized twice as many acres. So a full sheet of paper. <laughs> took about six months and $130,000. Think about that. Just you know, think about that when you start scaling that further. When we make a simple change, when we take an authority we have, we work with the public, we collaborate with them, we do something much quicker, and we literally save 90% of our cost and time. And we build trust in terms of being responsive to what we're doing. Think about what that means in terms of folks that can go out and do field work, that can go out and do monitoring, do additional archaeological surveys, keep you from sitting down and writing massive amounts of time in your EAs and CE, and the work that you're doing. It's big. All right, so let's look at that. So this, by the way, this CE is not very short. Um, it's well over 80 pages for a CE. So I talked a little bit about what that means compared to other agencies. So here's a BLM CE authorized 3,000 acres, 12 pages with pictures got lots of pictures. And here's another one that authorized 3,800 acres, and it's um, four pages and with an appendix. So, and I don't have it with me. The BIAs is a single page checklist to do similar type work. And we started pulling out things like their, their EAs for the BLM. So here's a BLM EA that is um, 22 pages, um, similar type work. So what you start to realize when you look at this is that what we're doing is really different, and what we're doing is actually costing us a lot of time and energy and money. And the question is, do we have to do that? And what we're showing is that we don't, that we have innovations that are occurring in places where people are trying something new. And it's working, whether it's scaling up EISs to make them really count, or whether it's doing more CEs that can deliver on large chunks and make that well. And so